There are a couple of settings that you can use in Cricut Design Space to upload your own images that can really be a game changer for your designs. And we're gonna go over a few of them today. My name is Kelly and let's get clacking. So in Cricut Design Space, we're gonna go to the left-hand side where it says upload. From here, we can either upload an image or upload a pattern fill, but today we're gonna upload an image. So you can use any of the formats that are listed here. So that's JPEG, GIF, PNG, BMP, SVG, or DXF. A lot of people prefer to use SVGs because SVGs is a scalable vector graphics. It doesn't matter how big or how small the image is, it's gonna have the same quality. But in this case, we're actually gonna use a, a JPEG or, or a PNG, just a, a standard image, because there are a couple of different things that I wanna go over. So I'm gonna click upload image, and here it'll say you can either drag and drop the file from a different location, or you can click browse. So I'm going to just drop in the file. And this is the image that we're working with. As you can see here, it is a little picture of a cute little sweet potato, because he's sweet. <laughs> And we can choose one of the three options on the right hand side. So the simple option you'd use for all of your flat colored images. So if you have just a black and white, you could use the simple option. And if you click on it, you'll actually see what it'll change your design to. So it'll give you a little bit of a preview before you continue. Moderately complex is when they have a few shadows and maybe a few different colors. It maybe has a little bit less of a contrast than the simple, simple images. Then we have the complex. And this is typically what most people default to. For me, I know that if I'm uploading kind of any kind of image, I normally always choose um, complex just as a default. I like to make sure that I've got, you know, the best possible image to use for that there. So by rule of thumb, most people just prefer to select complex, but of course it's completely up to you. Then we can click continue. So now we have a new panel with a few different sets of, of options. In the top left, you'll see you have three different options here and we'll go through each of them. So we have the select and erase. This is typically the one that people use, you know, the most. And you would use this option if you wanted to like remove the background from the sweet potato as an example, because this will pull in this image as like kind of a square. And if you wanted to have the potato as an outline, then you would need to remove the background. So it's already automatically selected on the arrays. So theoretically, most of the time you should just be able to click and it will remove the background. And if you zoom in, you'll see you're going to have a relatively nice clean edge on the edge there. If you didn't get a clean edge, then one of the things that you can do is to click on the advanced options. Reducing the colors won't necessarily help get you a cleaner edge. However, the color tolerance is exactly what you're looking for. So what the color tolerance means is that if you think of your color wheel, you have one color in the middle, and then let's say you'll have, for argument's sake, eight colors around it, because let's say it's an octagon. Then what that means is that if your color tolerance is set to one, it will only choose the one color in the middle. If your color tolerance is, for example, set to eight, then it'll choose that color and the eight colors that are touching that color. Just an example of what this means. So if you want to take this for an example, here we have like our grayish background and our color tolerance is defaulted to 16. But what we can do just to kind of exaggerate the points a little bit, I'm going to show you the color tolerance of one because you may get images with a slightly less clean line like this one. So if we click remove background, you'll see how all of these little images, even though they look like they're almost the identical same color, they haven't been removed. And that's because they actually aren't the same color. The color tolerance is telling us that the colors definitely aren't the same. So if we have to change this to 20, for example, the, the default is set to 16, but there's gonna be almost no difference between 16 and 20, so I wouldn't worry about that. If we remove it now, then you'll see that you're getting a much cleaner edge than what we got before, and it will cut significantly better. Then you also have the reduce colors option. Now reduce colors means it'll change the number of different colored pixels there are available on the screen. This is almost identical to what we started off with when we, when we selected the complex image. It wasn't simple, it wasn't a medium, it was a complex image. So if we had to change this to two, as an example, you'll see all the colors fade away and there's only two different colors on the screen. If we make it 16, you'll see it changes quite a bit as well. So most of the time you can, you can play around with this if you want it to be, you know, slightly different. But if you want it to be a full color image, you can just leave it on unmodified. And as an example with a color tolerance, if you have to change the color tolerance to 200, okay, and let's, let's bring the background back. If we click there, you'll see how it removes almost everything. There's obviously a lot of colors between white and 200, and it'll remove all of those. So don't put your color tolerance too high as you may not like the results. 
The next option is the erase option. And this is essentially just exactly what it says. It's in eraser. So it'll just remove anything that's in that area. And you can toggle the slider up or down to make the eraser bigger or smaller. And then the last one we have on the left hand side is the crop fun function. You wouldn't need to worry about cropping this particular image because Cricut Design Space will automatically make it exactly the same size as the sweet potato. But if you wanted to crop something out, like maybe you wanted to crop out the bottom of his feet there, then you can use the crop function to remove that. And then of course in the top right hand corner we have the undo, redo, zoom out and zoom in functions as well. So if you wanted to just manipulate how you see the design and undo something that you've already done or redo it. <laughs> From here we can also preview what we're going to be doing. So if we click on the preview we will see the normal cut. So in other words if you had to cut this out of a piece of vinyl or a piece of paper this is exactly what it would look like. But if you wanted to print then cut then it would look more like this. So we're going to click continue and now we can choose either a normal cut or a print then cut image. In this particular case, I'm going to use a print then cut image because we can always change it to a cut image once we've got it onto the canvas. So you don't have to have both. You can just upload it as a print then cut and you can change the name and you can add any tags. So if you wanted to search this at a later stage, then you'd be able to. So we can say sweet potato and we can then save that there. So I'm going to select print then cut and I'm going to click upload. And we'll see it's now been uploaded into our design space so we can click on it. If you click the little I button, if you don't like what you've added in, you can delete it from here. So we're going to just add it to the canvas. And here we have our little sweet potato. <laughs> and like I mentioned earlier about changing it into a normal cut, because we've added this as a print then cut, we won't be able to cut out just the outline at this exact point. We would actually need to print it with our printer first and then cut it with our Cricut. But if you wanted to just be able to cut it with a piece of vinyl, as an example, you can go to the operation in the top left hand corner and you can change that to basic cut. So that's typically what I do. I'll load it as a print then cut as I can just change it to a basic cut once I get it into design space. So I have both of those options while not clogging up my design space with, you know, both of the options there. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up to let other people know that this content is useful. Subscribe to my channel for more cricket and craft related tutorials in the future. And I will see you in my next video. And remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.